Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to give everyone who's logging into the call or into the presentation here just a few minutes uh, to log on um, while you're getting settled. If you want to kind of take a look at the reminders that we have up on the screen, um, primarily one of the things is just making sure that you are um, on mute while the meeting is going on. That just helps us uh, make sure that we're not having echoing or other other sound issues. Uh, and then there is a chat feature that everyone is welcome to use. So if you kind of see your little um, options or selections bar on your screen, there's a little um, chat box that says show conversation. You can click on that and enter your questions that you might have into that chat box. We will be monitoring that, but we won't get to the questions themselves until the end of the meeting. Um, and then this is a public meeting and is currently being recorded um, just to let everyone know that and we will be sharing it online as a resource uh, afterwards. And we'll probably, since this is a, a new program for, for some folks who might be joining us, I'm probably going to give everyone still about two minutes to, to hop on still if, if, if they might be joining. All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome everyone to the meeting tonight for the Brown Deer Park Park Improvement Project, including um, roadway improvements at the park. Um, we're very excited to be able to uh, go over this project and explain some of the previous project phases that have happened in the park. Um, so thank you all for being here tonight. And after the meeting, once we get the recording and um, the presentation, we will send that out to everyone. So we also uh, definitely welcome and encourage that um, you all share that with, um, with your friends, with your neighbors, and with whomever might be interested in learning more about this project. All right, so we will officially get started here. Um, so briefly, just the meeting agenda for tonight, we're going to go through introductions. I'm going to introduce the project team and then we will discuss the purpose of the meeting, a little bit of the project history, including the previous construction that has taken place at the park, uh, which started in 2017. Uh, and then some of the construction that I'm sure many of you saw this summer in 2020. And then we will uh, transition into our phase three, which is the project phase that's currently under design um, and slated for construction starting next year. We will move into some future considerations for the park and then we'll wrap up with a timeline, what people can sort of expect, um, and then we'll move to questions at the end of the meeting. So our project team and guests here tonight, um, we do have our supervisors, so District 1 and District 2 County Supervisors here tonight, and I'm going to just invite them both to say a few words. So District 1 Supervisor Sumner, if you would like to say a few words to everyone. Sure, thank you, Lindsay. Um, I, I'm a newly elected, and so um, I, I actually uh, saw the first two phases of this project and I'm so excited to um, see the completion of the project. I think the park is going to really look amazing. Um, really thankful to the Parks Department for all the work they put into this and also to uh, the previous District 1 Supervisor, Theo Lipscomb, who really um, put this project into motion. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight, Supervisor Sumner. Um, Supervisor Taylor, would you like to say a few words? Sure, thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining in. Um, and, and thank you to the Parks Department and all of the other individuals who were very vital um, in bringing this into fruition. It's a lot of work ahead of us, but I definitely know um, that it's in the right hands. Um, feel free to ask tons of questions. I think they have the chat thing, um, but I think you guys would be um, really glad to see um, some of the things that will come up in within Brown Deer Park and some of the expansions, as well as I wanna say renovations. Um, I will have to leave a little early for the meeting. I'll stay on as long as I can because I have another meeting promptly at 5.30 that I am chairing. Um, so I have to be there. Once again, thank you. Feel free to reach out to my office with any other questions or concerns, or I'm pretty sure Parks will have their contact information at the end as well. So thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Supervisor Taylor. We definitely appreciate you um, making time. I know you were a little bit double booked tonight, so we appreciate you have uh, having you here as well. Um, so then I'm going to hand it over to the Brown Deer um, Park Unit Coordinator, Steve Gallum, to also say a few words. Hello. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. Thanks uh, to the supervisors. Um, um, yeah, um, my name's Steve. I've uh, been over here at uh, Brown Deer Park for, uh, well, I guess this would, this would be my fourth winter. Um, I've been with the Parks Department for 12 years or so, started in 2008. Um, just a little bit about the Brown Deer Park unit itself. We have 10 parks within our unit, um, spans from Doctors to Dretzka. The, our northern or our southern border is uh, basically Good Hope Road, um, including noise. Um, yeah, uh, we, we handle all those parks in, in that unit and whatnot, um, but specifically uh, Brown Deer Park, um, which is kind of our hub, um, as many of you already know, um, we have many, many things that go on in the park, um, including, um, you know, seven picnic areas, uh, two soccer fields, uh, which one doubles as a rugby field, um, two softball fields, a uh, uh, sled hill, a cross country skiing course in the winter time, um, a championship disc golf course, actually. Uh, um, yeah, and the the uh, the hurling club, which is one of the um, kind of premier things that goes on in the park. Um, they were supposed to celebrate their twenty fifth twenty fifth anniversary this year. Um, unfortunately, uh, the COVID uh, prevented them from doing that. But anyways, they've been with us for 25 years, which is very cool. Um, and um, <clears throat> many trails that go through the woods, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the zip line of the Oak Leaf Trail borders uh, the western part of the park, and that hooks up to the Ozaki Trail to the north as well. It goes back into the city to the south. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we... Uh, that's that's a, kind of the rundown of the park. Um, there's a, a, a ton of stuff that goes on in the park, and it, this uh, this project is pretty exciting that it's uh, taking place right now. I know it's been a long time coming for for many of this stuff, but um, I'm glad to see it's 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 going. Um, I also want to say that we we definitely have a very hardworking uh, friends group, which uh, I very much appreciate. Um, so thanks to them and all their hard work that they, they put into the park. Uh, we really couldn't get it um, looking as, as good as it does um, without their volunteer, uh, their volunteering. So anyways, um, yeah, I'll be answering all the questions or I'll be handling the, the, the chat. So if anyone wants to type into the messages, um, I'll, uh, I'll be monitoring that. So anyways, I'll hand it back to Lindsay and, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks again. This is great. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Uh, it is definitely a, a very dynamic and busy park with men, many, many things going on. And I know that some of the folks who are joining us tonight to learn a little bit more um, are some of the members of those those friends groups or some of the groups that host major special events in the park, different things like that. So we're really excited to have you all here tonight and um, look forward to chatting more at the end or um, keeping in touch about this project as we progress. Um, 
So I'm kind of moderating tonight. So my name is Lindsay Frost, the engagement manager with Milwaukee County Parks. And then as we progress through the presentation, I will also be introducing Therese Grippentraub, uh, the landscape architect working on this project for County Parks, and Cliff Jansen, the civil engineer from Milwaukee County Architecture and Engineering, also working on this project. So now that we've done our introductions, um, we are asking to get to know everyone who's on the call a little bit tonight. So we are going to try out some interactive um, polling systems tonight. So this is actually something new that Parks is trying. So we're going to ask everyone to participate in this. And I'm just going to be switching screens to show our questioning system. So. We are asking everyone tonight, what is your favorite activity to do at Brown Deer Park? Just so we can kind of get a sense of who's on the call and the types of activities that might be represented here tonight. So we'll give you a little bit of time. You can go to uh, menti.com, enter the code that's at the top of the screen. It's 59099149. And we'll give everyone a few minutes to um, get to that location enter your answers there and then you can kind of see they're starting to pop up as different people are are um, putting in their answers. And we will save this um, this little word cloud that's being created here as well tonight so. All right, walking in the park. That's a that is that's a great activity. I think that a lot of folks definitely enjoy at Brown Deer Park. I know I personally have many photos of folks um, walking uh, along the road there at the park. All right, so I think a few might still be coming in. Um, you're welcome to keep answering that question. Um, we will be able to save this um, information and uh, kind of send it out as a little bit of a graphic update for everyone here. I'm going to uh, jump back in to the, the rest of our presentation, um, but this is great to see just all the activities um, that folks on the call tonight are, are representing at, at Brown Deer. All right. So thanks for trying that out with us. Um, it looks like it was working and, and hopefully a useful um, way for us to interact throughout the presentation. So next I want to discuss the purpose of this meeting. Um, so the project that we're talking about tonight is um, we're currently in um, early design phases still. So the purpose of the meeting is primarily to inform the public um, and everyone here tonight and park constituents about that design process um, for this investment at Brown Deer Park. Um, for a few of the project features, we are still looking at some different options and different design solutions, and we would like to consult the public for feedback on those options. Um, we'll get into more details about those options a little bit later in the meeting tonight. Um, for a brief project history, uh, this project um, started the, the three different phases started back in 2017 when phase one included improvements to um, southern sections of the loop road uh, and then improvements to the clubhouse road. The final cost of that phase one project in 2017 was about 757 uh, $100,000. And then in 2020, and many of you are probably familiar with this construction that was happening this summer, um, phase two included reconstruction of the circle drive and the parking lot at the boathouse, um, the parking lot at the clubhouse, and then also included new landscaping and green infrastructure. Um, we are still waiting for total final cost, but the estimated final cost for that phase of the project um, is about 1.85 million. And then for phase three, which is um, primarily what we will be discussing later tonight, we have an estimated available budget of about 3.9 million. Um, when we share this presentation out with everyone, we will have links to the reference in the 2020 county capital budget. 
Um, so with that, I would like to hand it over to Cliff Jansen from, uh, from Architecture and Engineering to explain the project history a bit more. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, and like Lindsay said, I'm Cliff Jansen, Civil Engineer in Milwaukee County Architect and Engineering Department. Um, this first slide, I'd just like to mention the color scheme. Um, the purple color is the already constructed or under constructed areas. Um, as you can see, it's purple by the clubhouse parking lot, um, the service yard lot um, in front of the clubhouse. Um, and also the boathouse drive. Um, you can follow the cursor that Lindsay has on there that shows you as well. Um, and that identifies, like I said, the, the current construction or and already constructed areas of Brown Deer Park, phase one, phase two. Um, the yellow color is the is the tw uh, phase three construction, 2021 proposed construction areas. And as you can see, that's that's the majority of the loop drive that we call it. Um, and it also includes reconstructing Bradley entrance, the Green Bay Avenue entrance, range line entrance, and also the um, you know the parking lots along the way. Um, and also there's also the red color is the Oak Leaf Trail, as Steve mentioned, um, that kind of identifies it graphically. And then we also have hopefully be able to get this accomplished with this project is a certified, hopefully maybe a certified 5K path, and that's the bluish color or the cyan color. Um, so that's kind of roughly what that exhibit shows. Um, next. Um, this next slide shows some photos of in 2017 of previously constructed areas around your park. This shows in front of the clubhouse. Um, as you can see, we um, we did the pathways and the roadways out in front of it. There were new curb and gutter, pavers, um, asphalt, and um, and also landscaping. We also improved the um, with a different project, but we also improved the clubhouse itself with a uh, new roof, HVAC, a new kitchen, newer kitchen, and that's the Oak and Antler Tavern. We also did some improvements to that. Um, so very good stuff happening already. Um, next. And now we're moving to 2020 construction photos. This was earlier this spring. We did water main improvements to the boathouse, service yard building, and clubhouse. Um, this is improvements from the water main entering the park. Um, these improvements uh, improve the water main that we all parks off or um, I wouldn't say often, but at some at times would have water main breaks because um, the pipe was getting old. Um, this, these, this improvements also um, improve the fire protection in the park. Um, with the main distribution to the boathouse, we are able to add some additional fire hydrants. Um, so this was a good improvement to the project. So next. Um, here you see a picture of the boathouse, and this is already dated. Actually, we already have we have another layer of asphalt. It looks a lot better now. It's landscaped even better. Um, this is probably I think a week old, um, but as you can see, we got lighting, um, a new walkway, and uh, new parking, and also a new roadway. We we improved the parking from 13 stalls to uh, 47 stalls. And we actually we improved the ADA accessible accessibility to the boathouse building itself with additional parking as well for ADA accessibility. Um, so good stuff with that one. So next, um, with this one, we're showing the light poles prior to them being installed. They actually are working and still in, and they're fully installed currently. Um, so this is improvements for safety and also cost efficiency on um, their old LED new light fixtures. Um, and the left picture is the picture of the golf, uh, the clubhouse parking lot, looking at the service yard, and the right one's the boathouse drive. Um, so next. And I happen, happen to capture some photos at night at the boathouse. Um, and you can see that improves lighting. Um, we, we kept in mind um, not to light up the forest 
so we did add back shields to the um, 12 foot high light fix light poles um, so it wouldn't um, spread artificial lighting into the um, into the woods to disturb nature um, but also provide lighting for people that rent it for weddings the boathouse for weddings and other rental purposes um, so that's a good safety measure um, and definitely warranted um, based on comments we received previously um, so the, um, so that's impressive i like that idea of lighting that's a good improvement to the park so next um here's some more pictures of the new led lighting this is the lighting in the service yard these pictures um these are motion detection so these are um at, they're only on in full intensity when someone's inside working um and when, when no one's there they go um dimmer um we can, I think we even have them off. Um, so those lights can be tilted from zero to, I think, 30 degrees, depending on how much light they need in there. Um, so good, good um, improvements there. Um, um, so, um, and we include, in, you know, it improves our cost efficiency with the park as well, all LED lighting. And I just like to mention the boathouse drive and the clubhouse are on a time clock too, so we can control the timing and when the lights are on it there as well or when the park is open um, or what the rentals are occurring with weddings and that so next um here's a picture from the clubhouse um this shows the improved um path to the clubhouse and the parking um involved this is just a nice picture um, with our landscaping um beginning in this picture like i said it looks it looks different if you go out there now um, but this kind of gives the idea what kind of a finished product to expect and also phase three. Um, so next. Um, we're also improving the stormwater quality uh, with the project. On the left side is a biofiltration pond. Um, this is at the Gulf um, Clubhouse parking lot um, looking towards the service yard. Um, this includes native um, plants and and this biofiltration acts as a way to filter, filter the water and also infiltrate into the ground, ground to the groundwater. Um, so um, good measures to improve the stormwater quality runoff from the parking lot. Um, on the right is permeable pavers at the boathouse drive. Um, not only do they look nice, they also provide a purpose. Um, they filter the water before they go to the ponds. Um, so that's a good addition to the boathouse drive. Um, and they, like I said, they look. Um, I think they look really nice. Um, next, next. Um, we also did uh, not only um, um, lighting, but we also did other service, you know, other safety improvements. We improved the safety yard, uh, the service yard um, for safety. Um, in the background, you kind of see the fuel tank. Um, when you go there, you can actually see it. It's, I think it's painted now. Um, but we added spill protection. We added some bollards um, and a new concrete pad. Um, for it to be stable and control the feel. Um, we also um, redid the electrical to it. So it's, I mean, it's got explosion proof conduit and all that um, um, good safety measures. Um, we improved the stormwater runoff from the lot. Uh, before, uh, the stormwater generally just ran off into the street. And now we control the stormwater by draining into vegetated, vege vegetated swales that improve stormwater quality. Um, and eventually this this water gets down to the ponds. Um, so this is a good addition to the project. Um, we also include, um, improve the material storage in that area and also equipment storage and flow. Um, uh, next. Um, then I'd like to hand it over to Therese. She'll talk about the phase three, you know, the key project features. Um, thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, Cliff. This is Therese Krippentrug. I'm the landscape architect with uh, Milwaukee County Parks and the project manager for um, Parks Project Manager for Phase 2 and Phase 3. And with Phase 3, some of the uh, items that we are looking at improving at Brown Deer Park is uh, the reconstruction of the Loop Roadway the narrowing of the loop roadway, which will help with uh, traffic calming. 
We are exploring options for new sections of off-street paths. We're looking at parking lot improvements, new satellite parking areas near the heavy use park amenities, lighting upgrades similar to, or, or exactly what we would be, uh, we would be using the same lighting fixtures that we used at the boathouse, the redesign of the range line road park entrance, and um, with all of the walkers at Brown Deer Park. And um, we are looking at adding a 5K course. Now this would be an off-road path that would offer a great opportunity for exercise and to hold uh, walk and run benefits. Uh, next slide, please. So this site plan, this is the same site plan that Cliff had referenced. And you can see the Green Bay Road uh, in the northeast or upper right of the site plan. Um, the Bradley Road is to the north and Teutonia is on the west side. So as Cliff mentioned, the yellow line represents the loop road that we will be making design changes to. The parking lot, which we refer to in this presentation as the west lot, is the one that is just off of Teutonia and shown in yellow. Lindsay is using her cursor to identify that lot. We're also looking at redesigning the east lot or redoing the east lot, and that is off of Range Line Road and Green Bay Road. And we are also looking at a redesign of the golf parking lot, which is on the south end of the park, just to the east of the clubhouse. Some of our popular picnic areas that we'll be talking about during this presentation are picnic area three, which is in the northeast corner of just off of Green Bay Road. That is the most popular picnic area at Brown Deer Park. And the playground is also in that same area. The play fields that we will refer to in this presentation, um, the really busy ones are the hurling field just to the south of the playground. And that's where the softball fields are as well. On the west side of the park, we have picnic area eight. And that is um, the second most popular picnic area at Brown Deer Park. And we have some ideas for that area as well. Uh, next slide, please. So with roadway improvements, um, we recognize that we have a very wide road um, throughout Brown Deer Park. And we would like to narrow that down because it does um, narrowing of the road will help, um, will be a safety improvement and it helps calm traffic. This intersection shown in the left photo is the range line road intersection. And right now it, it forks off to the left or the right. So you can both enter and exit the, the park from the left or right roadways. We want to uh, use the left road, the, the left fork, as both the point of ingress and egress to the park. And because the Oak Leaf Trail runs along Range Line Road, we want to use the east side, the east fork, for trail purposes. And that would connect to the off-road path that we'd like to, that we are designing into uh, this project. Next slide. So I mentioned that we would like to narrow the road down. Right now, a lot of the parking at Brown Deer Road is alongside the curb on the inner side of the loop. And the road is also used by bicyclists and walkers. Brown Deer Park is one of our busiest parks we not only have a number of different activities that take place, as Steve mentioned, we have hurling, disc golf, rugby, softball fields. We have soccer, organized soccer events, organized softball events. 
There's golf. Ta- we have, a, you know, uh, an amazing golf course at the park. People come here to cross country ski and it's a really, really busy picnicking park as well. So uh, we are looking at ways to uh, accommodate the parking needs for all of those activities and all of the visitors to the park and also providing a safe place for the people who walk the park on a daily basis or, you know, are are walking the park when they're there for another activity. Next slide. This graphic shows one design that we're looking at. And um, this would, this graphic shows on the left-hand side, a shared use path or a multi-use path that would be separated from the roadway. And this is our preferred option. And it really just depends on, you know, whether or not we can do this depends on um, funding. So once we have our um, planning completed and we and we uh, go through our cost estimating, we'll know whether or not, you know, what options we can move forward with. Um, but we also uh, want to, we'll be asking you for your input today during this meeting on which option you prefer. The, but what we're showing in this graphic is a multi-use path that would be separated from the road. And then we have a terrace area um, next to that, to the right of it in this graphic, curb and gutter, and then the roadway. Next slide. This photograph shows an example of the style of design that we're looking at at Brown Deer Park. And this is at Clutch Park. Uh, we've got the Parkway Road and then a terraced area that is that is that has turf on it and or that is turfed. And then we have um, the, the road, the uh, walking path, the multi-use path next to it. Next slide. This graphic shows another option. It is not our preferred option, but we're looking for input from you as well. And it's very similar to what we have now uh, at Brown Deer Park and how people use the road. It's just that the road isn't, uh, isn't striped and to, um, to, off, to show how the um, different areas are used. But this would be, you know, how it would look if it were a finished road and properly striped. Next to the curb, we would have parking, and then we would have a, a biking area um, that would be five feet wide, and then um, the driving lane. On uh, next to that driving lane, of course, would be the center line, and then the driving lane for the vehicles going in the opposite direction, and then. Um, there would not be a designated path, but people would continue in this option, would continue to use the roadway for walking and uh, walking against traffic. Next slide. So now I'll hand it over to Lindsay to, um, because we're gonna do another mentee uh, question. Thanks, Therese. Um, so we are going to switch back to that polling system that we used earlier. Um, so I'm going to bring up another slide, um, switch my screens, and it'll give you the instructions at the top of the slide. But the main question that we are looking for is just for the public to weigh in on these two options um, for the roadway and then that path or bike lane on the roadway that Therese just explained. So it'll take me just one second to switch my screens here. All right, so you can go back to menti.com and use the code 5909914 and you're able to, it looks like folks have already started voting, um, but it looks like you, um, you're you able to uh, vote there um, on those those options. And we'll give everyone a few minutes um, if they're still pulling up the website.
All right. I am definitely sensing a trend. Again, we'll um, we'll keep collecting data on this, so you're able to um, keep casting your vote. We will keep this um, polling page still open for a couple um, of minutes, even while we go back to the presentation, so you're still able to um, weigh in there, and then we will keep this information um, for informing our decisions, but then also um, to provide feedback back to everyone. All right. So then getting back into the presentation here, um, I will hand it back over to Therese to explain some of the other project features. OK, thank you, Lindsay. Um, so we um, are also looking at making some improvements to the parking lots. So the west lot, which um, is used by um, folks folks using the boathouse and also disc golf. Um, and that is, we, we have the opportunity to um, redo the asphalt in that lot and also make lighting improvements. So as I had mentioned earlier, we would use the lighting that we used at the boathouse. So that's uh, LED 12 foot lighting. Uh, next slide. And this is the east lot off of Green Bay Road. This lot is used by um, the folks going to the hurling field, the softball fields, and also some of the other active areas on that side of the park. And again, we would be redoing the asphalt in this lot. Next slide. These photographs show the Gulf or the East uh, parking. Um, this this parking is east of the Gulf of the Clubhouse, and uh, currently people park on both sides of the road, but it isn't adequately marked, and the center line of the road is not adequate adequately marked as well. So we will make improvements to that area. We would be redoing the asphalt. We plan on reducing the side, the size of the lot uh, on the south side of the parking lot. And then we have an opportunity, um, if you watch Lindsay's uh, cursor in on the right-hand photo, we have the opportunity to add that off-road path um, between the trees, the two sets of vegetation there, um, and again, off-road um, and, um, and through the uh, north side of that parking lot. Next slide. So we had talked about how we have most of the parking at the park, or a good portion of it, is alongside the curb on the inner loop of uh, at Brown Deer Park, inner loop of the of the road. Picnic area three is one of our busiest picnic areas and the photo on the left shows that area uh, and the playground is just beyond uh, to the south. Um, the photo in the right shows the uh, pathway going to the playground and picnic area three is just to the right. It also, this photograph on the right also shows the uh, accessible parking that we have here that um, currently does not meet code as well as we would like it to. So we, we have some ideas for improving that as well. Next slide. Okay, this slide on the left shows the new accessible parking that we added to the uh, to the clubhouse parking lot, and we were were looking at adding similar parking to um, the Loop Road area at Brown Deer Park. And on the right hand side, we're showing the type of bump out parking that we introduced to Brown Deer Park. This again is uh, a photo of Clutch Park and the Parkway Road um, is on the left. And then right now the, um, well, we, we included bump out parking at Clutch Park that is off of the road. So you're not parking within 
uh, the driving lanes and are up against that the curb in the driving lanes. You have this bump out parking, which creates a safer situation for people getting in and out of their cars. And this is um, a style of parking that we're looking at introducing at Brown Deer Park. Next slide. We're also looking at some small satellite lots and adding those to Brown Deer Park because as all of you know, Brown Deer Park, and as we've mentioned during this presentation, it's a very busy park. And so in some of those really high use areas, we're looking at the potential for adding some small satellite lots to serve the public um, uh, and all of the parking needs that we have there. Next slide. With all of the work that we've been doing at Brown Deer Park, our goal has been to improve uh, the storm water, the way that we manage storm water at the park. So Cliff had mentioned permeable pavers and uh, biofiltration basins and rain gardens that we put in. And we'll be looking at doing that, the, some of those same, uh, adding some of those same elements to the design that we're working on now that and the improvements that we'll be making in 2021. So this graphic just shows um, one style of stormwater management that we might use at um, in this uh, in this new project. Next slide, please. I mentioned earlier when we were looking at the site plan uh, that picnic area eight is the second most uh, busy picnic area at Brown Deer Park. And the photo on the left uh, shows a street view of that picnic area. And on the right, we're showing that we, with all of the picnicking that we have at Brown Deer Park, we, park, we have a number of picnic areas and, and it's a very popular picnicking park. We do not have any open air shelters. So that's something that we would like to add to this park and we're looking for your input on that um, as well, but we do not have the funding for that. So it's something that we would be looking at others to fund in the future. But uh, it would be a really nice addition to the park and it would overlook the, the lagoon. We will um, try to, we're looking at some parking options though, because that picnic, picnic area is so popular. We're looking at uh, possibly adding a small satellite parking lot there. So it really just depends on how our cost estimates come out and of course the bidding process. Uh, next slide, please. So um, that concludes my presentation on what we are planning uh, right now and in the design phase that we're in. And Lindsay will take it from here for um, another mentee question. And then we can get into the, um, into the chat room and answer your questions. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Therese. Um, so our last question tonight um, is really based on the fact that um, we have a set budget that we're working within to obviously achieve uh, a lot of things at Brown Deer Park um, included with this project. Um, so there, while we have preferred options in mind, um, we are still in the design process. So we may have to get to a point um, once we figure out our different costs for different things where we're going to have to start making some decisions um, between different options. So one of the things that we're looking for feedback on, and I know this might be a little bit small for you to read, so I will summarize it, but option one would be narrowing the roadways and investing less in parking in order to get that um, new shared use path that we've discussed. Um, if it were to come to those types of decisions, is that a decision that you would want to make? Um, or you would want us to make in the end. Option two would be keeping the roadways wider, supporting um, more of the parking and uh, parking lot upgrades, um, and then having that bike lane on the road, but not having the shared use path as an option. 
or the third option being neutral either way on the topic. I know that's a little bit more of an involved question, um, but one of the things we, it is also a different code this time. Um, we're only able to do two questions per, per code. Um, so if you're still logging into the website there, that new code is at the top of the screen. Um, but this is one thing that we are um, working to communicate to the public and to constituents is that um, we have that set budget that we have to work within. Um, and as we're designing out the different features, just like if you're you know, redesigning your kitchen, you might have to um, make some decisions between different things um, based on that budget. So. And this is also a space where I have a feeling during the discussion at the end, um, we will be able to talk about a little bit more. All right, again, this question will stay open. We will switch back um, to the presentation screen here and finish everything out. All right, so um, the last major thing that we wanted to go over with everyone tonight is our um, project timeline and then next steps that you can all expect. Um, we started very early preliminary designs earlier this spring, um, and then we've been doing design throughout the summer. Um, now we're at about 30% way through that design process and um, hosting this fall information meeting just to get everyone up to speed on where the project is at and sort of what to expect in 2021. Um, we will take your feedback and your questions and everything from tonight, um, continue our design process, move into engineering, um, which will create final construction documents, final bidding documents. Uh, and then by spring of 2021, we will be starting construction. Um, construction, since this is a massive uh, project affecting almost all of the park, construction will happen in two phases. Um, the Green Bay Road entrance is going to be the primary splitting point in the park where we will be able to keep part of that entrance open um, throughout construction. So in the spring, we will be doing construction from the Green Bay Road entrance um, north and west. So kind of as you would be going in from Green Bay Road and then following along picnic areas three, four, six, seven in the soccer fields. Um, and then connecting down somewhere kind of in between the, the boathouse um, and the clubhouse area a little bit to be determined there exactly where it'll um, cut off. And then in the sort of peak of summer, if construction all goes as planned in the peak of summer, there will be a little bit of a break and then come fall. So starting in about August through October, we would start again at the Green Bay Road entrance and head south and do the construction on the southern portion of the park going from picnic areas two, five, the softball fields um, and essentially reconnecting up to where the clubhouse um, construction took place already. And then by fall 2021, um, we hope to have a completed project in Brown Deer Park. Um, obviously this year, a lot of construction things got um, shifted due to just the um, nature of the, the world right now. So obviously these timelines are, um, and the funding available are both subject to change. So just letting everyone know these are estimates as of right now. So with that, uh, I know that folks have been asking questions throughout the meeting here, so we will take a little bit of time to address some of those questions um, in the chat box. You can keep putting those there. Additional questions um, after this meeting or if there's uh, more in depth questions, perhaps you can send those questions to parks partnerships at milwaukeecountywi.gov um, by October 23rd, so that is next Friday. Um, and then the project team will take a look at those questions. We'll see if there's maybe some frequently asked things or different um, topics that might be coming up. Um, and then I'll be getting uh, answers and just more information out to everyone. Along similar lines, the presentation was and is still being recorded. Um, and once we're able to convert that into an online video, we'll also have that available and we'll be sharing that with everybody soon. 
Um, so with that, we're going to shift into our chat here. And Steve, are you still available? Yes. Okay, I am. awesome. Were there any major themes you were noticing in there that we should maybe address first in terms of questions? Um, well, there's some parking uh, questions. Um, uh, and uh, I think for the most part, mainly um, Ebenezer from the African Cultural Fest was curious about parking, especially on the uh, uh, the east side of the of the park. Um, I think uh, and he, this is more of a specific thing for that event. Um, we kind of do a special thing for that uh, where we kind of make it a whole one way and uh, um, just because just to uh, accommodate the 3000 or so people that show up for that event. Um, so we do something different for that. But um, just uh, he had questions about whether or not bump outs, where they're going to be and et cetera, et cetera. Um, sure. Cliff or Therese, do either of you want to discuss kind of I, I know that some of that stuff is definitely still in design. Uh, the question was the number of stalls. Where the bump outs are going to be and, and how many they might expect. Oh yes, we were um, trying to locate those in specific areas, the high use areas like the playground picnic area three, for example, and you know near the rugby fields um, as many in many areas we can with our budget and 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 the, the, the space that it provides like there's trees and areas for example we can't add bump outs um so yes we i mean we're looking at um i could probably throw a number out there but i probably shouldn't but yeah we're trying to um get as many bump outs as stalls parking stalls we can as, as possible I'm just kind of scrolling through the questions here and seeing it looks like there was a question about the east lot or a few. Um, I that's remaining roughly the same size. That's correct, Cliff, right? That is correct. Yep. All right, and then. Steve did a great job of answering a lot of these as we were going, um, so yes. just kind of catching up on the chat here. Great work there. Uh uh, there is one from Jim. Um, he's wondering about the the potential for uh, shutting down the east lot. Um, I was just about to type something, but um, I guess to kind of answer that one, we we did talk about um, the east lot and maybe getting rid of it or moving it. But we we have determined that we're going to keep it um, uh, and keep yeah keep it as as it is basically and resurface it. Um, and then uh, where that where, where the walking path will be um, may determine if you know in that section if it's on the outer loop, um, which again, I mean, Cliff, I don't know if you want to say something about that, but um, crossing the road may not be an issue right there because uh, if the path is on that side, it might be just more convenient to be there. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah, Steve, that um, that's pretty pretty good uh, comments you had there. Um, and it's it's easier, it's less cost, it's more cost effective to redo a rehab a parking lot than to create a new one. Um, so there's that that too. I did notice that uh, I think I think Frank had a question about the budget. Um, yeah. As far as I know, it's been all approved and adopted already. Um, I, I didn't notice anything in the recommended budget as far as funds being removed. So I mean, it looks like it's still there. I'll add that um, this project was um, appropriated in the 2020 capital budget. Um, I can definitely check in with my supervisor as well um, to make sure, but um, we we talked about this project and having this presentation and we hadn't gotten any word that this one was um, at risk. Obviously things do and, and can change, but this funding was allocated in, in the 2020 
budget, not the 2021 upcoming budget. Um, even the construction for next year had already been allocated. So um, yep. we can look into that further though as well. Okay. I did check on the financial intranet and it did show that the funds are still there. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> Uh, Cliff, there, there's a question about uh, lighting. Um, I don't know if you want to answer that. Any any additional lighting that will be maybe perhaps around the walking path at all? Or I know Ebenezer asked about those picnic areas. Um, yeah, and that's, and that's something we can look into. That's something we could probably provide power possibly from the comfort station, I think. That's something that it could possibly you can look at we I never thought of adding lighting there but we should look at that it originally wasn't in the scope but I think we should uh discuss it and see what we can do all right and let's see so I think kind of one thing um, across the board um, for everyone to keep in mind is, um, you know, the more things that we add in certain places or completely move different lots or things like that, the, the larger those project costs become. Um, and then that does potentially eat into adding a new path is not going to be a small undertaking. Um, so adding a new path, if that is something that is seen as like the, a high priority, um, then that's something that we just want everyone to keep in mind that that uh, might lead to some other things, maybe not all the details being able to be fully built out um, as we all might like to see. So that's just sort of a, a, a general theme, but I'm kind of looking here at some more of the questions. Um, let's see. So there was asked if there's a long term plan for future improvements to the park. Uh, I don't know if Therese, if you want to talk about that. Uh, sure, Lindsay. Um, so we I I know that Brian Russert and his team in the natural areas program has completed a vegetation management plan for the park. And then we have, uh, you know, the three to four years of work that uh, that we went over in in this presentation that's been taking place. Um, I don't know of any other work that's planned work that is planned through the capital development process for Brown Deer Park at this time. Uh, so Frank, I don't know if you had something um, if you had something specific in mind or if um, that you think should be added to to the park or some kind of change that should be made but you know, please feel free to elaborate in the chat room if you can uh Therese, i just like to mention i was looking at the capital budget it looks like in 2025 there's a brown deer park pedestrian bridge replacement project um so there's looks like there's still activities i will say that just in general um i know we have 157 parks and i know we don't um have unfortunately the um, capacity or ability to have master plans made for for each of those parks but we often look at things um, like bridges for example bridges are something that we're looking across our whole system and kind of assessing all together in a group so there are some things like that um, same thing natural areas looking at their um, vegetation and restoration plans on a system scale uh, and then same thing for like our trails network um, so that affects the um, hiking trails through Brown Deer Park and also the Oak Leaf Trail but again looking at the system of all of the hiking trails um, rather than you know just the plan within one park necessarily so and then there is a few questions about let's see um fallen trees and natural area trails i think that's going to be more of a question for those folks aren't on the call with us tonight um but we can we can definitely talk to them about that. I don't think that's within the scope of the project at hand. 
And then a question just came in if the Steve's already on it was the Tetonia entrance eliminated. Maybe Good we job. do want to, maybe job. we do want to address all the entrances um, so they are all still staying intact, correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. And then so just the that, configuration yes. that at range just that change. That's correct. All right. Well, I think we've at least given some preliminary answers to some of the questions. Um, we will take a look a little bit more uh, in depth at everything. And then, like we said, um, I will see if I can get back to that slide, um, but we will be sending follow up information out to everyone um, to let you know how you can follow up or ask more questions. And then um, since this is still at about that 30% design phase, as I mentioned, um, we will have additional updates to provide um, as the project continues to progress over this winter. Um, so if you signed up for tonight, um, expect uh, we won't be sending out super regular and super frequent updates, um, but we will try to send out a few updates um, before the project construction itself begins next summer. So I think with that, I'll at least get to that last slide quick so people can jot that down quick. Otherwise, tomorrow or later this week, we will be sending out some follow up. It takes us a little more time to get the recording of the presentation turned into an online video, um, but as soon as that takes place, we will also share that as well. And we would um, really appreciate if everyone on the call tonight is also able to um, share that out uh, and just really appreciate everyone coming out and thanks everyone for participating tonight. So I think thank you, that, Lindsay, for facilitating and thank you, supervisors, for attending the meeting and for your great interest in this project. And thank you very much to all the participants. I think we might have one more question here. Uh, no, OK, just. Uh, yeah, some thank yous going on. OK, fantastic. Really appreciate everyone uh, coming out and we will be in touch with more information soon. So thank you everyone.